Welcome to the area of a parallelogram. Ooh, I love saying that. Parallelogram. 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 All right. We're figuring out the area of a parallelogram. Now, you might be wondering, what is a parallelogram? Well, it is just a shape that has two sets of parallel lines. So a square would be a parallelogram because here's one set of parallel lines and then another set of parallel lines. Now, would this be one? Yes, a rectangle would be a parallelogram because it has one set of parallel lines and then another set. And do you know what also is a parallelogram? A diamond, because it's got one set there, one set there. All right, so those are parallelograms. Now, how do we find the area of it? Well, first, we need to find the area of a square. And by understanding the area of a square, we'll then understand how to get the area of a parallelogram. To find the area of a square, you need the length and the width. This would be the length, and then this could be the width. By multiplying length and width, multiplying length times width will give us the area. And it can be summarized just like that. Length times width equals area. Now, I would have loved to have gone to a four square court and got a picture of that but I just finished some popsicles because I love sugar, sugar! And I use these popsicle sticks to represent our square. Let's take a look how length and width apply. Now here are some clean popsicle sticks. I love me my sugar, so I licked them nice and clean. Look at that, there's not even any um, residue of any popsicle at all. Okay, so here's our square. Can you see the length and the width? The length would be right here, and the width would be down there. And that would be the length and the width. And if you build a square, everything shaded inside would be the area. So how does this square turn into a parallelogram? Well, with some magic, I will show you. Check it out. Here we go in three, two, one. Magic, 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 magic. See that? Ta-da! Two parallel lines, which, you know, is a parallelogram. And that's it. Hmm, I'm wondering, can you still use length times width when we're trying to figure out a parallelogram? Let's take a look. Now let's take a look at that movie again and see if the length and the width can still be used to measure it. You see now the length is actually a lot shorter along with the width, just marginally shorter. So I don't think that we can use the original length and width. We've had got to figure out a different way. What we would have to do is actually rename these length times width into base times height. So length times width is the same as base times height. To find the measurements, this would now be the base and the height would be perpendicular to the base. Perpendicular means it would be 90 degrees. If we were able to find this and this, we would be able to multiply them to find the area of a parallelogram. Now base times height is the exact same thing as length times width. If this was the length and this was the width, we are trying to find out the length basically for this line and the width for that line. Now some of you might say, that's crazy dark magic, that doesn't even make any sense. How can we get an area of parallelogram by just exchanging base times height? Well, what if I told you that this new parallelogram is secretly a square? I'm gonna draw out personally this parallelogram. Just like that. Now let's remove the picture. Now I'm going to remove the old length times width, but I want you to keep that in the back of your mind, the length times width. Now do you see that green parallelogram right there? Now do you happen to see a square in there? Let me give you a little perspective. If I cut this right down the middle, I have a triangle right there. Hmm. If I were to cut that triangle and move it to this space, 
What do you think would happen? Take a look. Do you think that triangle would fit right there? That triangle would be right there. And voila, I moved the triangle. It just fit perfectly. Do you see the square? Do you see the blue base times height? And it's the exact same thing like we were saying. It's still length times width all over again. So it's not any magic at all. We now have a square once again. And the base times height that we were measuring is now back to length times width. If you have any questions about how I transitioned all of this, why don't you go back and take a look? All right, happy mathing.